Welcome, adventurers, to a world of wonder and whimsy, of fantasy and the fantastic, of Dungeons and Dragons. Please clap. Previously on Radventure, your party, your party. Yeah, we already fucked up. <laughs> Previously on Radventure, your party sought. Sh- <laughs> 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 it's, uh, it's only a hill from here. Previously on Radventure, your party sought shelter from a storm in a decrepit house. As ghostly echoes urged you to clean the house, it was revealed that this place was inhabited by two spirits named Harold and Lars. They appeared to be trapped in this plane until their unfinished business becomes finished. And they asked for your help, saying they'll let you have whatever they spent thousands of gold on if you help them. Alphabetizing the books, a secret passage was revealed, leading down to a dark dungeon. And alphabetizing would prove valuable as you solved the puzzle of painted blood in the next room, using Whirl's big blue rat blood to paint your way through. I think it needs to be canon now that uh, in beast shape you have uh, blue blood. And that's sure. where we pick up <laughs> adventurers. <laughs> As you open the door to the next room, Ooh. it is filled with these gray, papery lumps all along the walls and floor and ceiling. These are beehives. They oh, no. creep along the floors and ceiling. And you can see a door on the other side. But in the middle, you can see a large section of honeycombs, each about a basketball wide. And they appear to be filled with a golden honey. Yum. This seems bad. Why are there so many bees? I think we should not wake the bees. Do I see any bees around? Make a perception check. I was gonna ask the same thing, like, can we hear them? Are they awake? Are they sleeping? Are they dead? Make a perception check. That'll be a 21 for me. You start probing your antenna in and around this area. Uh, Magnolia? That's a nine. A nine. These are beehives. Uh, Yodik with a 21. Uh, <laughs> you're looking around. These beehives are old. Uh, they're like uh, started to be like carved away by like termites and other sort of like small insects. Um, but they once belonged to giant bees. Um, but they the bees must be dead at this point. There's no way a bee could live, like bees could live in this small area for however many years this place has been abandoned, so. I just had the strangest idea. What if Harold and Lars are actually bee ghosts? Right? Uh, what would their unfinished business be? Business? Good one. <laughs> bee? I, by bee ghosts, do you mean like... Like bees that like, died, and they're like, still here. So like bees like like your size bees. Like you, but like a bee. Oh, I'd never considered such a thing. But yes, something like or, that. I mean, these nests are enormous. The bees that used to live here are very large. What if they were like beekeepers? <gasps> Like, like this was like their business. Like they like, yes. they like sold honey. But who keeps bees in the basement? Uh. Bees in the basement. Really bad beekeepers. Hey, I didn't say they were good beekeepers. I said maybe they were beekeepers. Harold and Laws are are behind you, and they're like, um, hey, if we were beekeepers, we were probably like dope beekeepers. Sure. Yeah. Why not? Of course. Yeah. I mean, the honey looks great. 
It does. Yeah, I want to go. I want to go investigate the honey. I want to investigate the honey too. Is that does the honey look edible? Like, can we? Sure. Is it poison? Uh, all, all of you who'd like to make investigation checks. Oh yes. As you stealth into the room. Oh, that's terrible. Oh, that's a that's a four. That's a twelve for me. Well, mine's a twenty-four. No big deal. I got a sixteen. You definitely, Magnolia and Gert, you know that this is bee honey from a giant bee of some kind, because uh, there's really just one honeycomb that is filled with filled with honey, and the others are sort of just sort of like the top's been punctured, so it's sort of uh, wilted and become like gray ooze over time. Mm. Uh, but this honey, Gert, you know that it is fermented, and fermented honey sells for a lot of money. There's about uh, three bottles worth here, and a bottle sells for about 120 gold. Wow. Time to get that honey money. I know, seriously. I'm just concerned that it's a trap leading to the door that's behind all of this. If it's if it's worth a lot, I'm, I'm scared that if I try to take it, something bad will happen. So... <laughs> hmm. Do you want me to like... <laughs> poke it with a stick yeah oh i still have detect magic up uh because it's been let's see how long does detect magic last uh, it's been less than 10 minutes since i originally cast it right oh uh, yeah probably okay do i detect any any magic inside this room not really nice i announced <laughs> i announced that to the any party. big bees do i detect any big booties what okay any <laughs> any <laughs> Sure. Um, any big bees? Like the? Qu- I'm just nervous. We're gonna have to like fight a queen bee or something. No, I do not detect any bees, nor any big bees, nor any hands. It just all seems too good to be true. Probably. I don't know. I think it could be true. I think this might just be normal. Anyone have a bottle on them? No, but I have a stick. <laughs> Let's poke it. <laughs> poke it. I'm gonna take out uh, my staff and just like very gently poke my staff into the honey. Okay, yeah, there's like this like uh, waxy layer on top. Take the staff, poke it in, goes through and you see like this trail of like gold and honey like follow the stick. Like it's like that Cheerios commercial and it's oh, got yeah. like, the, like the staff and thing on the end like, ooh. Um, <laughs> uh, I'll like pull the stick back in and I'll lick it. Tastes like honey. It's like got like the little sourness to it, but it's really delicious. Like you can taste like a little like a little alcoholic flavor, but it's like sweet. It's not like it doesn't taste like alcohol. But at that moment, you hear sort of bzzz, getting louder and louder and rising from the floor. You see these ghostly giant bees. <laughs> so two uh, boobies, if you will. Uh, as they rise up, oh I need god. everyone to roll initiative. Oh my god. I... Oh, oh. That needs to be the title of this episode, honestly. <laughs> two, two big boobies. <laughs> uh, anyone roll 20 or higher? Uh, nope. <laughs> uh, 15 or higher? God, you guys are fucked. Uh, 10 or higher? I'm a 10. You are a 10, you know that? <laughs> <laughs> you guys, <laughs> Who rolled five or higher? Eight. All right, Magnolia and Yodic, what'd you roll? Two. A four. <laughs> I rolled in that one. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Two big blue ghostly boobies rise from the ground, and you see uh, the first one is going to make a sting attack against you, Whirl. Uh, that is a 16 to hit. That hits. You take eight points of piercing damage. I need you to make a constitution oh, saving dear. throw. Oh, jeez. Uh, roll high. Oh, yeah, that's good. Uh, that is a 19. You uh, feel that this effect of a paralysis starts to take hold oh, of you. Oh, no. And then you uh, uh, let it go. And uh, it does. It, it just flows off you like honey on a stream. Or it's a metaphor that makes sense. Up next uh, is the second one. It's going to attack. Uh, who else was invested? It's going to roll a d4 to determine. Uh, that's going to be Gert. Uh, you see oh, no. this. 
Uh, that is a 17 to hit. That hits. The big booby uh, shoots its sharp tail into you, uh, and you take five points of piercing damage, and I need you to take a constitution saving throw. Okay. 11. You feel this uh, paralysis creep over you, and you are frozen in place. No. Uh, it is now your turn, but you are paralyzed, so I'm gonna have you make another constitution saving throw. Okay. 13. At the end of your turn, you manage to uh, shake off the effects of the paralysis, so you are no longer paralyzed anymore. Ooh. But that is your turn, so it is now Whirl's Dang turn. It. Are the bees within 20 feet of each other? Uh, yes. Is it possible to fairy fire the two of them without getting any of my party members? You're all in the middle, and they rose on each side of the room, unfortunately. Okay. Damn. But you could definitely get one of them without getting the others. You know what? I'm just gonna... I'm gonna guiding bolt the one that's attacking Gert, because the one that attacked me is right in my face. Sure, make an attack roll. Oh yeah, that's a nat 20. Nat oh, 20. Yeah. This guiding bolt charges up and you see it just go right through the ghostly bee. Oh no. Oh, it's a ghost. <laughs> oh shit. I forgot. Ha, huh, that's an issue. Uh, <laughs> is there anything else you'd like to do? Uh, even if it's radiant damage, it still passes right through him. Oh, it's radiant damage? It's radiant oh, damage. never mind. Yeah, go ahead and roll damage. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait a second. I thought a guiding bolt was a, a lightning damage. No, it's radiant. In that case, never mind. <laughs> I'm glad you're here and you know the rules. Because <laughs> I don't. Uh, I didn't pull out enough d6s for this, so bear with me for a hot second. Because it's 4d6 doubled. Uh, that's Damn. a bad roll. Two. Annihilate that booby. <laughs> 20 damage total, uh, and it's outlined in shiny blue sparkly fire. How do you want to do this? <laughs> oh, well, then I just want to make it, ex <laughs> I just want to make it explode in blue sparkles. It's beautiful. This booby <laughs> just explodes everywhere. <laughs> and just, <laughs> you see like a little bit like trail off. Uh, and it is no more. It is gnome more. Ah, different, different Wrong episode. episode. <laughs> uh, and I'll just, I'll give Gert a thumbs up. Uh, and, Thanks, friend. And I'll use my bonus action to cast Shillelagh. Oh, nice. Yeah. Hell yeah. And that'll bring us to Magnolia. <laughs> I'm going to try and cast Command on this thing. Okay. And it needs to make... A wisdom saving throw, thirteen. If it if it works. Well, it rolled a four. Uh, let's okay. see. And I'm pretty sure it is a creature. Yeah. What are you commanding it to do? Um. What are you telling this I'm booby going, to do? <laughs> I'm going to tell this booby to grovel, so the target falls prone and then ends its turn. Amazing. Nice. You see it's hovering in this air, this boobies sort of like moving back and forth, swaying, and then it just sort of like <sighs> and it like collapses onto the ground and like has like its little legs up. They're kind of cute. I scream to the group. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. And that will bring us to Yotik. Uh, I'm going to cast Magic Missile at first level on the uh, prone booby. Okay. Uh, you, Magic Missile, and as you cast the spell, the darts shoot out, and they just sort of go right through it. And well, fuck. Uh, it appears to have no effect on this creature. Damn. All right. Damn. Could have could have possibly seen that coming, but that's all right. Uh, what fun do I have here? I mean, we have here. <laughs> I'm uh, having fun. <laughs> this one is going to uh, stand up on its turn. Um, oh, wait, does... I think oh, the yeah. Com yeah, command te turn. technically take command technically takes effect on its turn. Yeah, so it is still uh, groveling on the ground. Amazing. That's great for me being able to do things. Girl, girl. <laughs> <laughs> um, can I can I try to charm it and make it and befriend it? Uh, if this is is this charm person or is this something else? Um. I guess, well, can't be charmed person because it's uh, not human. Yeah. 
right? Correct. But can I just like use my instrument to like win its heart over? <laughs> yeah, if you want to attempt to, to, to win the heart of this bee, I will allow that. Go ahead and make a performance check. Make a, make a seduction okay. check. <laughs> Uh, that's going to be a 13. You play some righteous tunes uh, for this thing on your loot. Uh, and you, you do see, like, the bee is curious. Uh, it, it's a simple-minded creature, uh, but it's already seen one of its friends get exploded. Uh, and you have not charmed this booby, at least not yet. Okay. Um, can I use my bonus action to help heal Whirl? Uh, with healing yeah, life. hell yeah. Go ahead and roll that, <laughs> which is, okay. I believe, 1d4 plus 3. That's going to be a 5. I'll take it. Look at that teamwork coming together. Amazing. Yeah. And that's going to bring us to World's turn. Okay. Seeing, like, Gert's attempt uh, to, like, calm this thing down and charm it, I'm just going to, like, kind of hold my staff that still has honey on the end of it, like, over its face and just be like, hey, 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 buddy. Hey, buddy, you want a snack? You want a snack for not killing us? Make an animal handling check. Yeah, I'm, I'm decent at that. Ooh, that's a 22. A 22. Uh, the bee uh, is still, like, groveling on the ground, like, comes over and starts to, like, lick the honey. Uh, it's still pretty like cautious around, but you think you might have it uh, on your your side. Um, but you notice it's licking it, but nothing's happening to the honey, and that sort of makes it kind of upset. Oh. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. I think that's a that's a fair for a fair hint for a twenty two. Uh, that will bring us to Magnolia. So it's just this one bee upset that it's not able to lick the honey. Yep. One boo bee. Upset like sad or angry? Sangry. It looks a little kind of, it looks a little sad. I would say like that's sort of like sad. easy enough to, to gleam. I have a weird question. Uh-huh. And I don't know if this is like allowed or even how I would be able to use this. But can I press to digitate flavor for the bee? It says I can chill, God. warm, or flavor up one cubic foot of non-living material for an hour. I will Hell say yeah. you can try to create ghost flavor. You can <laughs> absolutely try. What even is ghost flavor? Is that does it taste like the mystery airhead flavor? <laughs> I think exactly that. <laughs> <is>. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly <laughs> that. <laughs> I, I don't think I roll for prestidigitation, do I? Uh, no, normally no. You can always like flavor that, but because that you're trying to flavor a ghost thing, I'm going to say make an arcana check. Will a 13 do? I feel like that's a ghostly number. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna roll. Well, what flavor are you trying to create? The, the mystery airhead flavor. <laughs> of course. Oh. You see this bee <laughs> groveling on the ground, watch its friend get exploded, and it sort of is trying to lick this honey, and it's like its uh, proboscis is going right through, and it's trying, and it looks sad that it can't taste this, and you press to digitate into the ethereal plane, and you see this sort of blue sparkle appear around the honey on Whirl's staff, and the bee licks it, and it looks at you, and it <gasps> fades away. Oh, all it wanted was some honey. Its business has been finished. Oh, I just Aww. wanted a snack. Now I it's business. <laughs> now I kind of feel bad for exploding the other one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, you you uh, you dismissed it in just a different sort of way. You know, yeah, it gets to move on. I, I finished its business for it. Just. A little more violently. Oh my God! We should do that. Oh, <clears throat> we should. We should do that for. Uh, uh, what are their names? Lars and Hammond. Harold. Her Harold. Yes. <laughs> we should use that spell on Lars and Harold. Uh, well, I feel like they get food from the ghost grocery store. Oh no! I, I meant. I, okay. I meant the spell. 
that he used to vaporize that that ghost. We could vaporize them, and then they'd be done. They wouldn't have any more business. Lars, Harold, do you want to be vaporized into blue sparkle dust? Yeah, we were right here behind you guys the whole time. Uh, no, thank okay. you. Uh, you see, they're eating like a bag of ghost chips, and like, uh, uh, it's like one of them has a, a ghost burrito. It was worth a try. A burrito. <laughs> Is it a ghost pepper burrito? Oh no, that's that's too much. The boobies have been defeated, and you may do what you would like. Can we take the honey? Yeah. Uh, for expediency's sake, you are able to grab three mason jars from the cabinets above, and uh, you're able to fill them with fermented honey. Before we find the mason jars, Yotik goes over to the, the honey thing uh, and like goes through his bag and pulls out a skull cup and is about to use the skull cup to, to put honey into. <laughs> oh, jars. The, yes, jars will work better than the skull. <laughs> you said those are worth 120 gold each? Uh, yes. Yes, they are. The next door is uh, appears unlocked if you'd like to go through. Let's keep going. Let's keep at it. I open the door. You open the door to the next room. And once again, it is dark, but now the air feels wet and damp. You notice a throne in front of you with a giant skeleton's body. But the head is missing. Looking around the room, you see on the side, like there are a few pumpkins actually growing out of cracks in the walls. Uh, There's about three of them and you see uh, resting sideways on the ground next to the skeleton is a carved jack-o'-lantern with like this evil snarling face with sharp teeth carved into it. But it's on the side. It looks like, you know, it's it's fallen over. Um, Beyond the skeleton, you see there is a sealed door uh, with an unusual keyhole. I'm going to investigate the unusual keyhole. Okay, go ahead and make an investigation check. No, that's a bad number to have rolled. Stop doing that. Uh, that's a seven. At first, you know, just like quickly looking around, it, it looks more cylindrical mm. um, and uh, got like a, uh, like most keys aren't cylindrical, which is why it's unusual. <laughs> that is unusual. <laughs> hey, Yodik, do you have like a goblin skull in your bag? Probably, yes. I mean, I he just pulled one rifling out. rifling through my bag. <laughs> I pull out like a couple different skulls. Do any of these work for you? It's like a bird skull, a human oh, no, skull. I just thought it would be funny if we put a really small skull on that really big skeleton's body. Oh, that would be so funny. Yes, let's use this bird skull. <laughs> it's so small. <laughs> I'm gonna, I, I cast Mage Hand and I put the bird skull up on top of the skeleton. <laughs> You uh, put the tiny uh, bird skull. Where did you get this bird skull from for reference? Is it just like a dead one you found or is it one like you killed? Uh, no, it's definitely just like a dead bird that I found. Okay, cool. Um, you see that the moment you put this tiny bird skull on top of the giant skeleton body, it like cocks its head around the room. The figure rises up and you see his arms start flapping up and down like a bird. He starts traversing the the room as though he's trying to fly. It is a 10 foot tall giant skeleton with these massive, like almost claw like fingers. It's like going. (laughs) Oh, that was a great idea, world. This is very funny. Uh, I'm going to mage hand and snatch the skull back off. Easy enough. As you do, the skeleton uh, just falls to the side. Wonderful. There's a limp on the floor. Interesting. Can we can we carve one of the pumpkins that's on the wall into a happy face and put it on the the skeleton? You can certainly try. As you go up to one of these pumpkins, go ahead and make a performance check. Okay. Um, that's gonna be a nine. So you make it a happy face, but there's also like this sort of like look of terror on (laughs) uh, the face of the pumpkin. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) I want to take the pumpkin with the happy, but kind of terrified face and put it onto the skeleton and see if it does anything. It It like rises up and you see this sort of giant skeleton become very... Uh, like, 
<sighs> like very anxious. Like it's like it's been surprised with like a birthday thing. <laughs> oh, oh, ah. Hi. Hi there. Ah. Do you have a key that fits that door, like in your pocket or something? Ah. You see, there are no pockets. It is just bones. Oh. Oh. Are you okay? Ah. <laughs> it's smiling, but also <laughs> incredibly anxious. Oh. Hey, like all of us. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Oh. Can I, can I, since it's kind of human, cast calm emotions on it? Yeah, I think you can. Uh, okay. What is it? Does it have to make a, it has to make a charisma saving throw. Uh, that is a 14 minus three, which is an 11, which I believe fails. Um, so it kind of, you see it going like, ah! It goes, uh, like <laughs> gives you like two thumbs up, like bony thumbs. <laughs> well, that didn't really help. I was hoping he would speak with us. Well, at least he's not like panicking anymore. That's yes, true. Or at least panicking less. He doesn't appear to have a key to the door though. Do you understand us, skeleton man? Or woman, I can't tell. You're a skeleton. Oh yes. It just nods. Uh, okay. Do you have a key for the door? Uh, kind of like nods from side to side. What does that mean? What does that have cultural significance? Do you know where the key is? Uh, is that a maybe? Uh, Do you want to take us to where you think it might be? He uh, just gives you a big thumbs up. Uh, All right. Okay. Yes, we'll, we'll follow. follow you. Take us there. He like stands up and like just looks at you all. He keeps giving you a thumbs up. Uh, is it in this room? Ah, are you like nodding? Oh, is it your thumb? Ah, can we like can we try to use his ah. thumb to open the door? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, I'll say because of, of calm emotions, you could easily lead him over to the door, and you see the cylindrical shape. His thumb just kind of <laughs> easily slides uh, oh. in, and it turns. Uh, and he goes, ah. like around that time, calm emotions is kind of wearing off. He's like, oh ah, no. Ah. I'm gonna use uh, Majin to pull the pumpkin off. He just falls over. <laughs> oh, I didn't get Good. a chance to say thanks. Oh. Oh. I, I made Mage hand the pumpkin head over to Whirl. Here, you can you can keep this. You can say thank you or I'm sorry or whatever you want to it. How big of a pumpkin is it? Uh, it's a it's pumpkin sized. Uh, make a nature check on the pumpkin, Whirl. Uh, that's a seven. Seven. It's a pumpkin. I don't really, I don't really don't want to carry this. I have really scrawny arms, so I'm just gonna just like gently put the pumpkin down next to the skeleton and like pat the pumpkin, pat the skeleton. Uh, you do hear like this loud crunching noise behind you as uh, Lars and Harold are like eating chips, uh, ghost chips <laughs> and watching. You could at least ask, you know, if we want some chips, you know? Oh, here you go. He tosses it to you. Uh, and it just goes straight through you. Oh, Thank did you, you want? Should I go delicious. get you some ghost ghost salsa? Should I go get some maybe some ghost guacamole? He's oh, very go sassy. Ghost Harold guacamole said. would be very good. Harold, just let them just come on. <laughs> They're being nice to us. <laughs> oh, going to walk away. Uh, <laughs> how how much does it look like this giant skeleton weighs? You try to lift the skeleton, and it does not move at all. <gasps> Fascinating. These bones appear to be enchanted. Gee, really? Enchanted. <laughs> that's why they came to life when we put a skull <laughs> on them. Well, that's sort of, that's <laughs> different than the bones themselves being enchanted. You can force life energy into a non-living object. That's trivial, but the bones won't move. But I want, I want the bones. Can you break off like a finger? I don't want a finger. I want all of the bones. I don't think we have room in our backpacks. At least I don't have room in mine. Nor indeed in the van. But what if on top of the van, all of the bones? No bones on top of the van. Damn. No bones on top of the van. <laughs> I, f 
I no. forgot about the no bones on top of the van rule. <laughs> it's now a rule. Has, has that been, it's has been that added been a, to the rule list? Has that been a day one rule? It, I think it was like... Absolutely. I think it was more Absolutely. like day six that was explained to me. <laughs> no bones on top of the van. Got it. I'll leave the bones there, but I'm sad about it. Well, Yotik is sad about it. I'm not sad. I'm having a great time. <laughs> I'm just kind of like imagining inside of Magnolia's van. It looks like an elementary school classroom with like a list of rules on construction yes. paper. It's like an elementary school classroom with bags of bones sitting around. <laughs> God, there's so many weird. There's like a bag of onions. There's uh, there's goblin pieces. There's cake. Good. There's candy. The bag That's of awesome. goblin pieces is probably just a bag of rotten slime now. <laughs> Yeah, it, ha- it has Gross. been like eight weeks, I think. <laughs> we should throw that out. Get rid of that. <laughs> Gotta clean Amazing. out the van. Well, <laughs> is that why it smells bad when I go to bed every night? <laughs> oh, I thought God. it was just Yotik. <laughs> no offense. I go through the door. Amazing. Uh, the next room. Uh, is also cave-like, and as you step inside, you feel something sliding under your feet. You reach down, pick some of it up. Caked in a layer of dust, this is confetti, and it's all over the room. Uh, To your left side, you see 10 large crates, but your eyes are drawn to the center of the room, where you see two large uh, ornate gold chests encrusted with gemstones and rubies. Um, you see that the one on the left is open, and uh, there are these black ashy marks, which you, Yodic, recognize uh, as explosive marks from that were similar to the mines around your yes. uh, house. The other chest is completely sealed. I have a feeling that these chests are trapped. You also see the remnants of two charred skeletons uh, in this room. Uh, it looks like they've been uh, blasted away to either side of the room. Ah, what if these are our boys? Oh, that would make sense. Also, last time I touched a treasure chest, it bit me, so I'm not touching that. Yes, don't touch <laughs> d- Don't touch the other one. That one very clearly exploded. Do the crates have any explosive symbols on them, too? Magnolia, you go over and you check the crates. Uh, they're... Uh, you see written on them. It looks like there's like we're partially shrink wrapped and like a few have been taken out. Uh, it says uh, 12 pack confetti exploding treasure chests, 99% off. Uh, and then you see in big letters defective made with 10,000 more times more explosive powder than necessary. Uh, diffusing instructions included. And you have a little notepad that has like instructions for diffusing. You also see a a stack of pamphlets on them, uh, little brochures that say, coming soon, Harold and Lars's behead and breakfast, a getaway for the adventurer who loves their work. Battle your way through our cutting edge dungeon, find glorious treasure and complimentary waffles. Book us through Air D&D, Air Dungeon Delvers. Air D&D. I think uh, this is how we get them to the other side, guys. Yes, we, uh... What, we, we destroy their skeletons? Can I keep their skeletons and they still go on? I think that's up to Lars and Harold, because it seems, Lars, Harold, are this, this is your bodies. Uh, this does look familiar. Can I hand them the pamphlet? As you do, yeah, you see this sort of like look of recognition in their eyes and like, oh my God. But as you pass them the pamphlet, it sort of like just falls through their hands, but then they like <laughs> go and look at it. Um, they're like, this look of recognition, like, This must be our unfinished business. Uh, We must have been blown up here trying to defuse the chest. What if we need someone to finish the dungeon we built? They looked at the rest of you. That could be. Or what if you need someone to dispose of all of this foul glitter for you? Maybe that's the thing. You hate glitter, right? Lars kind of (laughs) looks up to the side. I do hate glitter. (laughs) Well, what I'm thinking is that we, as adventurers, just went through the dungeon. And maybe our last step is to defuse one of these crates, you know? Because right. I'm assuming when they wanted to do the bed and breakfast, it was like, go through the bees, figure out the pumpkins, and then, like, you find a chest, and then it, like, 
yeah, you did it. Confetti not I blows confetti. up in your face, you know? Like Yotik puts a so claw right. to his nose, which he totally has. <laughs> not it. I know. Like I said, oh. last time I touched a treasure chest, it almost... That's not... It. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> no... No nose goes. You don't have a nose. Uh, can I look in like one of the crates and see if I can find like some of the diffusing instructions? Yeah, uh, there, there, pretty, there's multiple copies of them. You uh, um, take them out. You see, like first step one, open panel on side. Okay. I'm gonna retreat to just just on the other side of the doorway that we came through, and then peek around. Yonik, don't you have a magic hand that can do this from a distance? Maybe. Then why am I over here doing it with my hands? Well, you're very good with your hands. You're a very handsy young man. <laughs> I think that's a compliment. I think it is but, too. <laughs> but I still disagree. Do I see a panel? Uh, yeah, you do. There's like a little panel on the side. It's sort of like uh, flush with the wood, but uh, you can uh, open it if you'd like. Yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. pry it off carefully. Uh, you open it and you see that there are six wires inside. There's red, oh, no. orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. Uh, and you see Harold and Lars are, Lars are like right behind you. And you're like, see, it's, look, it's impossible. All the wires are the same color. Oh no. Were either of you colorblind in your previous life? What? The, I don't know, uh, I don't know, what is that? That the, Those are all different colors. Uh, before you get a chance to explain, you start to hear a ticking sound oh, from the panels. Uh, uh, flip through the th through the instructions, looking for anything about wires. So it says uh, instructions: first, cut the strawberry. Next, cut the sun meeting the sky. Next, cut the carrot without its blood. And finally, cut the last remaining primary. And a timer is starting. Well, okay. Well, strawberry is red, right? Yes. And then sun meeting the, the sky is usually like a pink or an orange. Right. Unless. Right? The carrot without its blood, possibly white. There's no white uh -huh. wire. It's it's the colors of the rainbow, right? Uh, correct. The colors are uh, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. Okay. So I think it's definitely strawberry. red, orange, probably. Well, okay. Here's the thing. The last remaining primary. Blue. So it has to be red. Red, orange, green, blue. I guess carrot without red. its blood could be yellow green. because blood is red and yellow yellow and red make but, orange. But carrots Wait, don't have if we blood. Need... Right, but it can't be white. Wait, so what if, because cut the last remaining primary, Blue. to do that, we would have to pick two primaries. Right. Oh. So it has to be red, yellow, and then blue, but which, right? What sort of primaries? Is it red, green, blue are the primaries? Is it red, yellow, blue? Or is it cyan, magenta, yellow, and black as primaries? I think it's uh, red, yellow, it's, blue. Yeah. In this world, there is only one primary, and it's, it's yellow, uh, red, uh, blue. Okay. <laughs> so wait, we need we need one more in there. So it's first cut the strawberry. Right. The sun meeting the sky. I thought it was purple, like a sunset. Oh man, S sunsets can be so many know. different the colors. Yes. I wonder if the carrot without its blood. That's green. what's throwing me off. It's green. Would that be green? It's green? Like the like the carrot green. So it's like missing like the actual like carrot part. Yes, green. Okay, that would make sense. So then it would have to be red, yellow, green, blue. Just so you all know, some of the terms are capitalized. <gasps> Mamma mia. Oh. I'm not looking at what the answer is right now, so I don't know if I'm dissuading you from what the actual thing is or what the a wrong answer is. What words are capitalized? Strawberry, sun, sky, carrot, blood. Oh. Primary. Oh, shoot. Okay. Strawberry, sun, sky, carrot, blood, primary. And the ticking gets louder. Hold on. Strawberry, yellow, blue. St red, yellow, oh, blue. Strawberry, red, red, yellow, blue. But then what's the Wait. last primary? Red, yellow, orange. No. 
strawberry, Red. and then blood. The ca- oh, the orange with hold on, orange without its blood. Wait, orange without its blood would be blood would be yellow unless the sun is orange. The sun would have to be orange then. Because a carrot without its blood would be a carrot without red. Which, which is would yellow. Be yellow. Which is yellow. So red, orange, blue, yellow. Blue? Sky. Wait, sorry. Sky. Oh, sky. Wait. Oh, I'm. Okay, wait, wait. Red, the sun is yellow, the sky is blue, would that be green? And then orange and red are. I don't know. No, that's no, no, that's that yellow. Makes, no, no, that may no, Rachel, that makes sense. Red, green, because the sun meets the sky. Yellow meets blue is green. Carrot without its blood oh. is yellow, because it's a carrot without red. And then the last ah. remaining primary would be blue. So red, green, yellow, blue. Right? That makes sense to me. The ticking gets louder. Ah! Start cutting wires. Do it from a distance with your fancy hand. I can't see through my fancy hand. Damn it. Okay. It's called, it's called mage hand, not mage eyes. Okay. Well, Let me just double check that this makes sense. Red, yellow, and blue meat. Yeah, okay. I guess I'll cut the I'll cut the wires in the order of red, green, yellow. All right. Blue. Well, let's go one by one for these. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Before you do that, Moral, hmm. can I cast Unseen Servant to do this? Please, yes, just, God, yes. I was just gonna <laughs> cast Unseen Servant, but Unseen Servant has a casting time of ten minutes. Oh, does really? Yeah. I could have Neil do it. What? Uh, Neil pops <laughs> out. <laughs> Yeah, I do no, have claws. No, casting time one action. One action yeah. plus ten minutes, right? That's what it says for me. Uh, the, that's that for a says, ritual. That would be if you wanted to do it as a ritual. You can cast it as but, an action. But Neil could also act as an unseen servant if you would like. But the time is getting uh, dramatically closer. Who's doing what? Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna cast it and then I'm gonna tell it what to cut. Okay. Do it. I'm gonna back the fuck up. <laughs> Me too. I'm backing up too. I'm going yeah. to I'm I'm going to ready a shield spell in case there's shrapnel that comes at us. Perfect. Okay. Okay. What is it again? Red. Red. Green. Green. Yellow. Blue. Blue. Okay. So uh, let's let's go one at a time. First one to cut. Red. 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 The first thing you do is cut the red wire. Well, the unseen servant you see takes out a little pair of unseen scissors. <laughs> <laughs> and nothing happens. I think that's a good sign. What would you like to cut as your second wire? Green, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cut the green. At that moment, nothing happens. God damn it. Oh my god, that was <laughs> scary. <laughs> that was scary. <laughs> Time ticking's getting louder. Uh, what's the next one? Ye- yellow's next. Yellow's next, right? Mm-hmm. Yellow is cut. And there's like this pause and nothing happens. <laughs> this is going cut very blue. well. Cut that blue, wire. blue. Like very slowly. You can see like the ticking is getting like like it's amping up. Like this is seconds away from exploding as you click the blue and the ticking. Oh no, he froze. <laughs> is he frozen or just holding still? He's being I can't, I can't. <laughs> I'm go with you. I'm just right. <laughs> as you click the blue wire, the ticking goes and it stops and nothing happens and it appears the chest has been defused good job excellent (laughs) who did that an invisible person tell tell your invisible friend I said thank you for not making me do that with my hands he, he says you're welcome what is your invisible friend's name his name is Invisible Friend. That's very original. I know. 
Right. Click. Uh, the thing, the chest opens, and inside you see uh, there are uh, a thousand uh, gold pieces. Uh, and as you get closer, you realize they are entirely made of plastic. Um, yeah. But you also see placed squarely on top of this is a book uh, with sort of these uh, claws and dark eyes and teeth and things coming out of it. Uh, Yodik, do you have Identify prepared? I do. I always do. I, I rush over to the book and grab it. <laughs> of course, Yodik grabbing the loot. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, 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 identify. the book. I don't have a loot. <laughs> I have a loot. <laughs> Do you want me to play I don't something? grab the loot. <laughs> do I have a loot? Let me check if I have a loot. I'm just gonna just gonna do the identify thing. Um, <laughs> you cast it on it, and the, the usual voice is replaced by one a little darker. This is the book of goose bumping. It is a rare, wondrous item. You see, within the pages of this tome, there live a fluster cluck of terrifying visages. <laughs> Once per day, the Book of Goosebumping can be opened as an action, casting the spell Fear, as illusory giant claws, glowing eyes, and ventriloquist dummies spring forth from the book. <laughs> Each creature in a 30-foot cone emanating from the book must succeed on a wisdom saving throw of 15. On a failed save, the creature drops whatever it's holding and becomes frightened, using the dash action to move away from the Book of Goosebumping. Creatures can repeat this saving throw when they can't see the horrors of the book, ending the spell on a successful save. The spell remains for one minute or until the book is closed. The user of the book does not need to maintain concentration in order for this spell to continue. And there are many who wonder how the book of Goosebumping received its name. You see, the answer is simple. It was crafted by the most notoriously evil species, geese. <laughs> it's so it's true. Right. <laughs> the most evil bird. I, I I caress the book. I treasure it. I stroke it. Fitting. Uh, you see, at that time, both Harold and Lars begin to glow like this beautiful, warm, sunny light. Our, our unfinished business. It's been finished they start to like rise upwards we can we can move on with our lives thank you oh thank goodness goodbye i hope you have a nice afterlife well you see like lars like turns to harold you know we we did like already get food for the week i've, I've heard there's like a like an orphanage nearby that we could go haunt so you want to you want to go yeah like, sure okay well now we have the option too so uh thanks for uh releasing us into the world bye <laughs> They're gone. I love <laughs> helping people. It's so rewarding. And it's nice to get magic books for helping people. You're just collecting those now, aren't you? I've got two. They're wonderful. I love books. I pull I pull out the Nomonomicon and I rub the two books together. Oh, books. That's <laughs> slightly concerning, but I'm just going to go with it. <laughs> My goodness. So, yeah, you have conquered this dungeon and released Lars and Harold. If there's nothing else you'd like to do, you can uh, spend the next uh, day, you know, it's gonna take another few more hours for the storm to pass over. I'm wondering if that receipt that we saw earlier is for this book or if that is still in the house somewhere where we need to go grab does the it. Book, does the book strike me as something that would be worth a thousand gold? Uh, make a history check or make an arcana check. Oh, yes. Uh, Gert, are you looking around? Uh, go ahead and make an investigation check. That's a natural okay. 20 with my modifier 25. Nice. And I got a 22. Hell yeah. Uh, so uh, between the two of you, you know that this book uh, is probably very valuable, probably worth more than a thousand gold. But looking over at like all of the things in this dungeon, Gert, you find like a manifest of things. It's like, giant uh, cursed uh, skeleton body and <laughs> bees and uh, these the rest of these like chest things that were there uh, and it totals to about like over a few thousand gold pieces of like putting wow. this whole place together 
Like, Got it. Uh, fake cave walls, uh, ever-growing <laughs> pumpkins, uh, things like that. Imagine okay. going to the store and you come back and just on your receipt, there's just a line, bees. Bees. <laughs> bees. Giant enchanted skeleton. <laughs> Can I scoop up like a bunch of the confetti from the ground? Yeah. Yeah, add, there's uh, also in the undetonated, there's like t- like a ton, you get like a bucket of confetti. Oh yeah. Um, you could take that out easy peasy. I feel like we should do something about all of these explosive crates. Seems sort of hazardous to just leave them here. They got instructions for diffusing them. What's the issue? I mean, in my experience, when explosives sit around for a long time, they become unstable and the diffusing thing might not really work. They might explode just from being touched. I would hate for that to happen to someone. Well, no. If you read explosives on a box, then you probably shouldn't touch it. You know, that's a very good point. Right. I think it's safe to move on, you know? I'm, I'm, I'm making a beeline for my van right now with a sponge, and <laughs> my main goal is to get rid of the goblin bits. <laughs> you finally found cleaning supplies. We're going to deep clean the van. <laughs> and I'm going to spend the next couple of hours deep cleaning the van. As we're all leaving the room with all of the explosives, uh, Yotik hangs back and then looks back at all of the crates and then takes out a dragon scale, casts a little spell, and then uh, I cast uh, a. How do you pronounce this? Aganazar's Scorcher. My oh, fire, no. a, a five foot wide, 30 foot long beam of fire toward all of the crates. Oh no. Okay, while you're in the room? Uh, no, while well, I'm just outside the room. Uh, the rest of you upstairs, um, hear a loud explosion. Yodic, go ahead and make a dexterity saving throw. All right. <laughs> oh yeah, that's terrible. That's a six. <laughs> okay. You take uh, 24 points of fire damage. Uh, as, nice. Uh, sorry, I'm uh, 12, down. Points of, tw- uh, 12 points of fire damage and 12 points of bludgeoning damage as the entire room explodes uh, with 100,000 times the force of that explosive powder. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm down. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna, I mean, I'm going to run downstairs when I hear things exploding. Make an athletics check to see how fast you could get there. Oh, oh good. <laughs> uh, this will this will go great. Uh, yeah, that's gonna be a two uh, minus one. Okay. So I fall down the stairs again. Yep, you're you're running there. Uh, from like the the garage, like through the several uh, chamber layers. Um, uh, Yoda, go ahead and make a death save. All right. <laughs> I can't believe it. Twelve. Yoda. Can I? That's one success. <laughs> yes, yeah, Magnolia. I'm gonna run downstairs too and look for the books. Uh, make an athletics check. They're in my bag. It's a 13. 13? Okay, you get a little bit ahead of, of Whirl. It's still gonna take you all to run through. These are like 30 uh, foot chambers that are filled with difficult terrain. Um, so uh, uh, go ahead and whoever's trying to continue forth, make uh, another round of athletics checks. I guess I'll also come down stairs. Can I wild shape into a panther? Cause it runs, it has a speed of 50. Uh, yes, you can. So you're, you're getting a little closer. You know, you can't bonus action. Uh, I guess right. you couldn't bonus action dash regardless. Uh, you could action yeah. dash. So, well, my, uh, yeah, my, my wild shape's in action anyway, but. Oh, right, right. Uh, okay. But I can move 50 feet at least, so that's better. Uh, Gert, go ahead and make an athletics check, and Magnolia make an athletics check. Uh, Yoda, go ahead and make another death save. Oh, yeah. I literally got a two. 16. 16, all right, that's two uh, two pluses. Hell yeah. (laughs) It's another 13 for me. 13, okay, yeah, making positive progress. Gert, you kind of like get sidetracked a little bit, Uh, (laughs) stumble down the stairs. Uh, Okay, that's a little better, that's a 12. 12, okay. Yeah, you're moving along. Yodic, go ahead and make another death save. All right, come on, big money. 10. Yodic, you stabilize. Nice. Uh, and the <laughs> rest of you, because uh, now we're out of this, you know, you get there as fast as you can, a panther approaches, you see uh, this smoldering room with black smoke coming out of it. Uh, as and then you see Yodik's mangled body uh, <laughs> on the ground, uh, like in the room with the giant skeleton. Uh, who gets there first? 
I'll say it's it's you, Whirl, probably. Okay. Uh, I'm going to. Oh shoot, that's. But those are both. Well, it doesn't really to matter. To draw dicks on his face while he's out. Got it. Uh, <laughs> I think about it, but yes. at the moment I just see him smoldering on the ground. So I'm in an unwild shape and cast a second level healing word. Okay. Uh, the rest of you arrive around that time. So yeah, you're all you're all there as uh, Yodic rises back up. Uh, ooh, that's good. <gasps> that is eleven points of healing. Oh my. Ah, uh, see, but, I I told you they were dangerous. Are you okay? I am now, thank you. Why did you blow those up at like point blank range? That I wasn't it was thirty <laughs> feet away. The spell only works from thirty feet. That's You're incredibly smart, and yet why did you do that? For the greater good. <laughs> you almost died. Honestly, I'm really proud of Yotik, because normally he would be like, let's just kill everyone. Hey, that's not fair. I've never said those words before. Uh, <laughs> At least not it's usually the, along the line of those. It's, it's along that, yeah. <laughs> not not within the last few weeks, anyway. I, I just, it, it would seem such an untimely death. Couldn't you have just, like, had... A, one of those little invisible people like walk a torch into that room and like set it on fire instead of standing there and blasting it with fire and almost dying. That wouldn't have been as much fun, would it? <laughs> okay, you need to go back to the van and take a time out. <laughs> as Yodik is walking back to the van, I'm gonna hand him a sponge. <laughs> oh, thank you. I've always wanted whatever this is. And I put it in my bag. Don't eat it, please clean. <laughs> <laughs> Yodic, as you're sort of uh, walking back up, you know, you're limping, uh, things aren't looking great for you. Uh, you hear this little voice on your shoulder. Hi there, Yodic. What? Hello? I'm the Sherry Fairy. The what? Sherry Fairy? I make sure that everyone shares. I'm the one who helped you come back to life. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Where are you? <laughs> I'm right here on your shoulder, teehee. I look on my shoulder. Just, uh, you don't see anything. I've just noticed that you have a lot of magical items and the rest of your party doesn't. And I was wondering if you wanted to share those. I love sharing. Uh, oh, good. Well, I hope you do. Because if you don't, next time I won't be so nice. Tee hee. This is very is bad. Gone. Hearing voices is not a good thing. Normally it's the voices of the dead. <laughs> You're probably, you're, you're hearing voices now. You're probably like a little dazed from like, you know, no, I don't, exploding yourself. I don't know what you mean. Uh, Whirl, you, uh, you don't have shoes, do you? No. Wait, they, wait yes, you, I wear, wait a second, wait a second. Yes, I wear, <laughs> I wear shoes. I'm pretty sure I've never seen shoes on those feet. There, there are currently shoes on my feet. You know what would look great over your feet? Shoes. I, I, I sit down and I take off the, the moon boots. Here, Whirl, you, you, these would look great on you. Okay. I give Whirl the, the boots of... Uh, the shoes of the moon. The shoes of the moon. <laughs> Whirl, when you activate these, you just become weightless. Nice. It's not like you can fly. It's like uh, if you do have cantrips that propel with force or fire, you can like Iron Man shoot them behind you. <laughs> Ooh. Interesting. I could just like guiding bolt myself around the room. <laughs> I walk away and then I whisper into my bag, don't worry, I'll never let you go to the books. <laughs> <laughs> and then I go upstairs with my fantasy Windex and uh, clean all of the glass on the van. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> As you all uh, finish cleaning the van, a few hours later, the storm passes and you get back on the road. Having reached level four. Woo! Nice. Yeah. Woo! You're level four, you're level four. I can start throwing some really bad things at you. Hell yeah. <laughs> clearly, not, clearly not that bad if 24 hit points put Yodic on his ass. <laughs> oh, I only I only have 20 hit points. Oh. Uh, my my AC is 11. <laughs> right. It was, it was 66 and I rolled really high and I'm so glad I did. <laughs> it was well deserved. I knew that was going to happen. Yeah. 
as you all continue forth, traversing the forest full of small rabbits and birds and deer, weeks pass, and ahead you see a mountain. Whirl. Following the star map, you know you have to go this direction to find the lost tomb of the Necro Wraith Scepter. But you approach the mountain, looking to the left, looking to the right. This mountain range, it appears impassable. As you get out to be sure, start is, you know, the mountain's pretty close to you at this point. You hear a noise in the distance. A little soft, low cry. And that's where we'll pick up next time. Oh no. Boy. <laughs> How ominous. Yotik pulled out the dragon um, scale. I just imagined the dragon tails like, I wish, I wish, <laughs> uh, my, my heart or whatever. And then like all of a sudden everything just explodes. <laughs> dragon tails meets Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>